to divert the attention of the people from the high cost of living, to divert the attention of the people from the, you know, or constant increase in fuel prices, to divert the attention of the people from load shedding, to divert the attention of the people from the dollar, which has kept on going up, to divert the attention of the people from the fertilizer, which he promised was going to be uh, 250, and it is still 800, to divert the attention of the people from everything that he, he promised, which has never taken place. So, when you are caught up in a web like that, you have to figure out how to come out. How do you do it? You have to start doing silly things like this so that people's attention is diverted. That is what happened. HH has come to realize now that governance is a big task. It's heavy on his shoulders. That's why you see him stop even having press conferences. He tried inviting a radio station to state house, you know, posing, you know, that he, this is how the president is going to be connecting with the people. That's the first time he connected with the people. After that, he disconnected himself. Because he has nothing to say. Completely nothing to say. He has created so much confusion even in the administration of his, you know, of his government that there are ministries now where there are two ministers in my view. Okay? So if you go to the Ministry of Information, there are two ministers, Chushka Sanda and Tabo Kawana, who is just a director. But sometimes he is given more prominence than the minister. Because maybe he speaks better English than Chushka Sanda. If you go to the Ministry of Health, there are two ministers, a guy called Dr. Chirengi and Sylvia Masewa. The other one has an office at State House. The other one has an office at Ndeke House. The other one has a, a closer ear of the president. The other one doesn't. Okay? If you go to the Ministry of Finance, I was listening to a program two days ago where the presidential specs, spokesperson, Anthony Wari, was speaking as if he's Minister of Finance on monetary issues, policy issues. And he's given more prominence than Stumbeko Musukotwan, the Minister of Finance. So that's a confusion that he has created, even in his own government. Okay? And when we try to raise, you know, these things and say they are not done, you know, like this, what does our paramount chief Chitimukuru say? Don't throw stones at dogs that bark at you. Very an civil metaphor. So I want to take this opportunity to say to our traditional leaders, stay out of politics, because we'll start answering you back. Because we are not backing dogs. We have a right in the democracy to express ourselves and, the, and represent the views of the ordinary person. This democracy which we are enjoying today was not brought about by traditional leaders. It was not brought about by church leaders. It was brought about by the Zambian people. In 1990, 1991, some of these the traditional leaders were members of the, of the Central Committee in the Kaunda government. They didn't fight for this democracy. So when the president goes to visit them, let them confine themselves to issues of development. Because if indeed we are backing dogs, HH was a backing dog just to, 10 months ago. He was with us in the opposition. Okay? So I think let our traditional leaders use civil metaphors. They have no right to judge on, on behalf of the Zambian people who should be in the opposition and who should not be in the opposition. The cost of living is rising every day against the Zambian people. People are hungry. People have no food. People can't afford the prices of essential commodities. How can a traditional leader say you are doing very well and those that are, are talking against you are detractors and they are backing dogs? No. 
is that right? Is, is that not a harsh, you know, castigation against the tradition? I'm not castigating. I'm, 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 I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Don't, don't misapply weight. Oh, what is more worse, you know, referring to me here as a backing dog, and me saying to the traditional leader, use civil metaphors. I'm not a backing dog. The Just economic front has got members in northern province. It has members all over the provinces in this country. Okay? Paramount Chief Chitimukuru in northern province has Bisas, Bembas, and nine Bisas and, and Bembas that live in that, you know, they are represented by those of us that are, are in the opposition political parties. Okay? So, the point I'm making, and I have to make this point, that we don't want to start answering back our traditional leaders. Because if they are going to make political statements, we shall make political statements also. And we have a right to do that. This is a democracy of the people, for the people, by the people. Not by one individual, a group of individuals. Let's go back to the fight against corruption. You, you, you say, you're saying this fight is all about finding a uh, 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 former president Edgar Lungu. Yes, it is Edgar Lungu that they are looking for. Now, do, do, what, what, do you, what do you think about his immunity? Is it going to, 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 to be protected? No, I don't want to speculate. All that I'm saying, all that it, I'm it, saying... It may not be speculation. No, no. You, no. you are looking at it from a, a legal point of view. They were attempting you know, to remove you know, the immunity. What they're trying to do now is first find a ground. Okay? What they're trying to do now is find some ground on which they can stand to say to the Zambian people we are removing Edgar Lungu's immunity. That's why they are groping in the dark. Okay? And mark my words. That's the direction in which they are, we know they are going. Why? Because they told every Zambian that Edgar was so corrupt. And I'm not saying this because he's my friend. If tomorrow Edgar is arrested for corruption, you know, that he stole from the Zambian people, I'll not defend him. But they told everybody that Edgar was so corrupt that it will just take a day for them to prove the corruption against him. They have not done that. So what do they do now? They want to go and exhume the body of a dead man to prove how corrupt Edgar was. That's the point I'm making. 